ಸಹನಾಭವತು ಸಹನೌಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿತ್ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಗುರುಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಅಖಂಡ ಮಂಡಲಾಕಾರ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ಚರಾಚರ ತತ್ಪದ ದರ್ಶಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಾಂಧ್ಯಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷು ಮೀಲಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರೇವ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಸ್ಥಾವರ ಜಂಗಮ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ಯತ್ಕಿಂಚಿಸ್ಸಚರಾಚರ ತತ್ಪದ ದರ್ಶಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ವ್ಯಾಪಿ ಅಸರ್ವ ತ್ರೈಲೋಕ್ಯ ಸಚರಾಚರ ಪದ ದರ್ಶಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತ್ವಮೇವ ಮಾತಾ ಚ ಪಿತಾತ್ವಮೇವ ಬಂಧುಶ್ಚ ಸಖಾತ್ವಮೇವ ವಿದ್ಯಾದ್ರವಿಣ ಅಷ್ಟು ಗೀತಾಧ್ಯಾನ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಓಂ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣೇನ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಗ್ರಥಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿ ಭಗವತೀ ಅಷ್ಟಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭವದ್ವೇಷಿ ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾವರುಣೇಂದ್ರರುದ್ರಮರು ಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈಸ್ಸಾಂಗಪದಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಸಾಮಗಾ ಧ್ಯಾನಸ್ಥಿತದ್ಗದೇನ ಮನಸ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಯೋಗಿನ ಯಂ ತಿದುಸುರಸುರಗಣಾಯತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ಸರ್ವರ್ಮನ್ ಪರಿಜ್ಯ ಮಾಮೇಕ ಶರಣ ವ್ರಜ ಅಹಂ ತ್ವಾಪೇಭ್ಯೋ ಮೋಕ್ಷಯಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಮಾಸುಜ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓ we are doing gita sara bhagavad gita sara means essence of bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is one of the prasthana trayam that is the three pillars of hinduism the other two being 
the Sruti Prasthanam, which are Vedas, and Bhagavad Gita comes under Sruti Prasthanam. Sruti is Aparushayam Vedas. It's not written by human being. We may need some chairs if uh, people cannot sit on the chairs. Uh, those young people can sit down and mature people can sit up. <laughs> So you can take these chairs also, there to those who need to sit down on the chairs. So Prasthanatrayam is three pillars where Hinduism is based. So only those that are done in those three are validated. So I don't produce any new theories. Nobody produces any new theories. What are our scriptures? We are based on these three pillars of Hinduism. The one is Nyaya Prasthanam, Sruti Prasthanam, and Smriti Prasthanam. Sruti is the highest, which is the Vedanta, and that is considered according to Hindu beliefs, is Aparushayam. It's not written by a human being. So how can it be? So there can be different explanations, but simple that a rational intellect like me can accept is, in the seat of meditation, Things are revealed to the rishis. Rishis are the scientists of adhyatmic scientists. When they are in the seat of meditation, things get revealed. That is same true even in the objective sciences also. When you are meditating on a problem, things get revealed to you. A scientist may say, I discovered it. Whereas the rishis say, it is revealed to me. So they are called Veda Drashtas. All the rishis are called Veda Drashtas. They, they could see in their seat of meditation what's revealed. And that they passed on to the student. And the student heard from his teacher, therefore called Shruti. And that student passed on to his student. So there is a Guru Parampara. And also there is a methodology of teaching called Sampradaya. Sampradaya means uh, this is the way to teach properly because if I, directly if I go and read the scriptures, scriptures themselves won't advise you to do it because it says, Tad Vijnanartham sa gurum eva abhigachet. For learning this knowledge, approach a teacher alone. So don't come to me directly because if you come to me directly, you get thoroughly confused because things are in a mystical language, it has to be unraveled. How does the teacher know? Because he learned how to teach that from his teacher. How did that teacher know? He has learned from his teacher all the way to the Lord. So the Lord himself revealed to Brahmaji and all that it comes down. So this is what a Shruti Prasthanam is that is based on the belief that it comes. It is Aparushayam because there is no individual opinions there. These are all the laws that are being said about the nature of the reality itself. And in that Shruti, which are Vedas, the, 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 the end part of the Vedas are Vedanta. Vedanta is where philosophical discussions are put in and the previous part is called Karmakanda. Karmakanda where instructions are how to do. By reading Karmakanda, nothing will happen. By reading cooking book, nothing will happen. You have to cook according to, you have to put this, you have to put that, all the processes are there. In the same way, Karmakanda is not a means of knowledge. It is a means to do something to get what you want. Whereas the Jnana Kanda, there is nothing to do but something to understand. So all the philosophical aspects are done on the Vedanta. Vedanta is where Upanishads and that's why it's called Vedanta philosophy. Philosophy is where Vedanta, in the Vedanta means in the end of the Vedas, this is discussed. Veda also means knowledge. So, Vedanta means the ultimate knowledge. So essential knowledge is packed in the Upanishads and that becomes the main pillar of Hinduism. Then comes this, the, the Smriti, which is Puranas, and Bhagavad Gita comes the essential part as one of the Prasthanatrayam considered because there are so many Gitas. Even in, Bhag in the Mahabharata, Krishna teaches again Arjuna called Anugita in the end. 
But this is considered as the main teaching of where Sarvopanishadu Gavo Dogdha Gopala Nandanaha. So all Upanishads cows are being milked by Gopala, the, the cowherd of Krishna himself, and he has given this essence. That's what in the Bhagavad Gita Dhyana Sloka, which we didn't do it, we only did the first and the last slokas. And then there is a third pillar which is called Nyaya Prasthanam, where logical discussions are provided, and that is Brahma Sutras. Brahma Sutras is where, like a mathematical equations, where its sutra form provided discussing how one should interpret the Upanishads and Gita also. So there are contradictory or apparently contradictory statement. How do we bring out samanvayam? Samanvayam means coherency in the teaching. And that's what is the logical part. And therefore it's extremely logical. So if you take that text, people will go to sleep. Because it is all counter and counter to counter, objections, counter objections. All that will be there in just one Athato Brahma Jignasa, pages and pages and pages of Acharyas have written of interpretation, what does that atha means thereafter, whereafter, whereafter, a discussions of pages. After gaining the requisite qualifications, then you do rest of the, the Brahma Sutras. So that are Vedanta study. So these are the three pillars and Bhagavad Gita comes where it is not only the philosoph philosophy that was discussed in the Vedanta, but it's also Yoga Shastram. Yoga Shastram is, it is how I can apply this to my own life and then reach that highest pinnacle. So it is done in, not in the sitting in Himalayas where there's no problems and everything is convenient, calm, quiet. But it's taught in the middle of the war where the student is a man of action. What should I do now? That was the post question and teacher teaches to that. So it is uplifting to the student how one should act in the life. So it is a manual for life. At the same time, we have the vision of the highest reality because the purusharthas, the what is to be accomplished by the purusha are dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. So it is moksha via dharma, artha, kama. Because that's what is essentially. So dharma comes first and that's what the whole Bhagavad Gita comes, starts also. So if you understand the whole scenario, it is an application of the philosophy. You say, how do I apply this? That is why Bhagavad Gita is. Krishna himself taught how you apply this. So it is for Arjuna. No, Arjuna is only a cow, the calf helps to milk. So the cows are milking, but we need a calf so that it is milking of the cow milk and Arjuna is only a vehicle here. So with that, we can dive into the text now. Our question is, why should I study Bhagavad Gita? How many times I should study? Or should I study once? I'm sure many of you already got exposed to Bhagavad Gita in one some form or something like that. Already heard and sure Swamiji's or some lectures and all that. Then why again? Same thing they're going to tell. Same Arjuna has a problem and Krishna taught all that. So why should I learn some more? Now think about yourself. You heard Bhagavad Gita. What happened? Did it solve your problems? Examine yourself because now we are, we are coming to the sara, right, essence. So why should I study one more time? And how long I should, how many times I have to study this? So examine your own life and say, what has done so far the study of Gita? Should I study one more time or not? You find out that you understood what exactly Krishna says. Most of the people know. Oh, I am not this body, I am not this or this one, all this, you know, I am Atma. It never, all those things, people can also give quotations and all that, right? But yet, our life is still going on with the Bhagavad Gita knowledge also. 
Where is the problem? So this we have to examine ourselves. Each one has to examine myself what is the purpose of studying Bhagavad Gita. Purpose is, it is a manual of life. I have to follow it through. Then only it's meaningful. So what should I follow depending upon where my capacity is? What is my level in this hierarchy of the picture that Krishna has painted here? In the third chapter, Krishna, Arjuna asks, says, you say the jnanam is the highest, but why are you asking me to fight? I also want to go and go to Himalayas, give up all these things and go. Says, this is Lokeshmin Dhividanishta Pura Prokta Mayanaka Jnana Yogena Sankhyanam Karma Yogena Yoginam. So there are two paths one is Jnana Yoga and Karma Yoga. But what yoga one has to do, one has to follow, depends upon where you are. What's your mental state? Therefore, for you, Karma Yoga is first required. You have to get qualified for Jnana Yoga because Karma Yoga is Jnana Yoga, Siddha, Jnana Yoga Sadhana Siddhartam. For preparing the mind for Jnana Yoga, you need a Karma Yoga. If I am not prepared and go to Jnana Yoga directly, what happens? Oh, I understood very well. Class was so beautiful. But when I leave the class, I am back to the same. Why? The mind has not sinked. Swamiji used to give a beautiful story. I'm sure you all heard, but see the implication of the story. Remember Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones on the rat? People have heard? So when Mr. Jones suddenly thought he's a rat. Don't ask me how. Formal, he thought he's a rat, not a man. So if he's a rat, he has to be careful. Whenever a cat comes, he has to hide in a closet because he doesn't want to get exposed to the cat because he's a rat. So whenever the cat comes, he is to close and hide himself inside a closet. So his wife saw, what is this happening to him? So he says, there is some problem. So he took her to psychologist. Psychologist says, what is this? Because I am a rat. I have to protect myself. She says, no, you are not a rat, you are a man. So now I am a rat. So psychologist has to train him. No, rat looks like this. You don't look like this. You look like this. This is a man. And so on. The teaching went on many, many times. And after says, yes, I am a man, not a rat. Mr. Jones understood. Just like we understand, I am Atma. I am not this body. Understood in the class. So Mr. Jones went back after understanding. Then he saw suddenly cat is there, waiting there. He ran back with a fear and says, what happened? I thought you understood you are a man, not a rat. I understood that I am a man, but not a rat. But I don't know whether cat knows that I am a man or a rat. <laughs> so what is his understanding? Understanding is I know I am Brahman, but my neighbor doesn't think I am Brahman. <laughs> This kind means I have not understood. Follow where the problem is? We think it's a, it's a Jones problem. It's our problem. Because once the class is over, we are not able to sustain that knowledge in our minds. Why? Why is the, what is the problem there? The problem is we have not prepared our mind to do that. Why? How do I prepare my mind? That's the reason why. There are two things. It says, Lokeshmin dhivida nishta pura prokta mayanaga jnana yoga in sankhya naam karma yoga in yoga naam For people who have not able to do that, you have to prepare your mind for that karma yoga is the path. So that's why the Bhagavad Gita comes a karma and a dharma comes into picture. 
So how long I had to do? You have to evaluate what is your state of mind. How much you are able to lift your mind and live this knowledge in your life. So it is not only a Sara teaching here, but you have to see how much I can put this into my own life into practice because this is a yoga shastram and see where the problem is in my life, where I am not able to do it, to what extent I can do and not able to do it and what are the remedies in order for me to do this. That has to be learned as we go along. Then only the knowledge that we have learned becomes internalized, becomes one with it. Otherwise, it is what is called an objective knowledge, paroksha jnanam. I understood, just as Mr. Jones understood he is a man, but that understanding is not, I am really a man, a factual understanding. It's not an understanding as an understanding as a fact. It's only an understanding as an understanding as a thought. That is difference between a, a paroksha jnanam and aparoksha jnanam. And that is why we have to continue to listen. So how do I get out of this? How do I make this aparoksha jnanam into aparoksha? Aparoksha means immediate and direct. Yes, I am. That is indeed true. At all times and every circumstances, how can I internalize this knowledge as this is indeed true? For that, shraddha is important. Shraddha is complete faith in the teaching that it is what the teaching is says is indeed true. So what is a teach? What is a shraddha? Scripture itself provides. In fact, in the Vyaka, Vyaka Chudamani, it says, Shastrasya Guru Vakyasya Satya Buddha Vadharana Sa Shraddha. Recently I was, I was watching a YouTube. So the Bharati Swami Shastrigar, I don't know, the, the Shungeri Mathajipati, he's traveling now on the Chaturmasam and he's giving a talks and they are putting on YouTube. If you want to watch, you can go. And he was teaching in Coimbatore about the need for proper karma and dharma, anushthana, to the audience. And he mentioned a story about some person came, he had some problems and he went to priest and says, if you do this karma, the problems will go. So since the priest said, he did that karma, as the priest said, following whatever rules, regulations. But it didn't go, problem still remain. So he said, what good is this Vedas? He says, Vedas says, if you do this, this is the palam. But it didn't get the palam, that your fruit that, he, that the, it promised. And uh, Swamiji says, the problem is not in the karma, not in the Anushtanam, because you have no faith that it will give the result. <laughs> you are doing it only because the Shastri said. You have no conviction that if I do this, it will happen. That has to be, that comes only by complete Shraddha. So what is the Shraddha? Shastrasya Guru Vakyasya Satya Buddhyavadharana. That is in the Vivek Chodamani. What the Shastra says? Shastrasya, Guru Vakyasya, and the water teaches through taking the Shastra is indeed Satyam, is indeed true. That means the Pramana Satyam, the means of knowledge is what he says is indeed true. I may not understand it. I may have doubts about my understanding, but the truth is correct. I have no questions about the truth. That faith is what is required. So the difference between aparoksha and paroksha, where I understood but I am not able to keep that understanding in my daily life versus understanding as an understanding as a fact, comes when 
there is a complete shraddha means lack of what shankara calls his chitta suddhi purity of the mind so how do i get a purity of mind those who are involved in the actions have to done through karma yoga but those who are listening into vedanta purity of the mind comes by continuous shravanam and mananam by constantly listening to the scriptures until it sinks in as indeed true not only in the class outside the class also so where is that difference between what i learned in the class and what my operation why there should be a difference it is because of the lack of the purity of the mind required so what should i do only way to do is constant remembrance of the knowledge that i am in not this and i am that alone for that vedanta shravanam mananam and nididhyasinam means contemplating on the teaching is the only methodology that is there so what was our question why should i listen to bhagavad gita once more remember i had to listen to gita or write about the gita think about the gita all this continuously until yes indeed it is true and it vega swaramani there is a funny shloka avijnate pare pare tatve shastra distu nishpala vijnata vijnate api pare tatve shastra distu nishpala it says avijnat if i do not know avijnate pare if i do not know the reality then study of scriptures is useless but if i know script if i know that truth vijnate api pare tatve shastra distu nishpala so if i know the scriptures then study of scriptures is useless if i don't also it is useless then when it is useful <laughs> implication is if i don't know the shastras means if i don't know enough to apply that in my day to day life as indeed true then just study of scriptures is another text study of chemistry study of physics and all that it's not objective science it is about me so that has to be understood when i study it it has to be understood that as indeed true has to be realized or recognized then only the study of this scripture this this shastra study will be a fulfillment indeed so now why are we here today we are here studying bhagavad gita sara essence of bhagavad gita although we understood in the past we want to internalize the teaching as that is indeed true it does doesn't come here just in one and a half hours until next week it comes only if you keep this teaching and apply it is that true is that true is that really real how can i apply now then only the the scripture comes alive in my life so i hope with this classes we do that sadhana as a shravana sadhana not only listening but applying in our day to day life to see how far i can reach that heights as being pointed out by krishna so what i am going to do is keep this theme in mind and look at this shloka selected shlokas to see what exactly is the truth and where i am how far i can apply in my life so in the first chapter of gita it's called arjuna vishada gita vishada yoga vishada is crying right and arjuna is crying and it says yoga how can that be yoga and why should i study his problem arjuna vishada yoga because it is a picturization where a student and the teacher are brought together that's called upodghatam introducing the situation where student approaches a teacher and surrenders himself that's the methodology of our scriptures 
just because the teacher knows he doesn't go to tom tom every house and say do you believe in that otherwise you will go to hell otherwise and all that he won't do it you have to go to the teacher tad vidhi pranipate na pariprasne na sevaya krishna himself says you have to approach a teacher and ask questions then only he will answer depending upon your qualifications so therefore it's not teacher has no obligations to teach until the student surrender himself i need this teaching and that is what emphasized in this first chapter and the part of the second chapter so what is the problem of arjuna it's not arjuna's problem it is our problem also that's why it's relevant to us so what is that common problem that we have that arjuna has and we have says ragam sokam moham therefore samsara this is the arjuna's vishada yoga ragam is attachment so everyone now look at what rag not arjuna's problem or problems now where is the problem that why i am not able to reach the heights of what krishna says this is the problem right there what arjuna has a problem i have the problem what ragam what is his ragam he says i want to fight and then he sees and says guru no hatwan mahan baho i say how can i kill these gurus and my gurus and all my people and all that so this i and mine has become a problem there he knows he is a kshatriya and he has to do dharma yag that is a, not a, any fight it has to establish the dharma what is right that is duty so when it comes to duty the duty that he has to do is covered by the attachments and he doesn't know what is right and what is wrong in the process because of clouded by the attachments now apply in your own life what is my duty and where the attachments are coming and clouding my vision of the goal it's not krishna's problem now this is a human problem that's why krishna takes very high light in the very beginning itself because this is a fundamental human problem itself because of the ragam he becomes a shokam the crying because says he cannot even think he cannot even hold the 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 gandivam gandivam samsraje hastat he is falling apart he is not able to think and he is crying now vishadanti says that's why arjuna vishada yogam and we cry because of our attachments is something wrong to have attachments what's wrong to have attachments my wife also asks me this question all the time what's wrong with attachments there is a difference between attachment and love we get confused yeah this is i am applying this is not bhagavad gita this is application now <laughs> cuz we get confused between attachment and love attachment is our dependence on something other than ourselves for our happiness follow it clearly attachment is i depend on somebody or something for my happiness love is i let others to depend on me i don't depend on them i let others to depend on me because they need and means a love real love comes when i can give it not i can take it attachment is i want happiness from this happiness from that people are not meeting my expectations oh he is like that he was he used to be something like that now he is no more because my expectations are not being met by him or by her or by this and by that because then only i am happy when everybody meets my expectations then i am happy so my happiness depends upon the circumstances of the people meeting my expectations 
Therefore, my happiness depends on them. Whether it's a body or concept or idea or a thing, doesn't matter. That is the source of my happiness. A few days back we had a power failure, remember? In Virginia at least, you know, with four days we didn't have it. There's no coffee at home. Misery. Why? No, I'm happy. Unless I have a cup of coffee, I cannot be happy. People are running around, McDonald's, this place, everybody, there's a lines, miles and miles and lights there. Because my happiness depends on cup of hot cup of coffee. Not Vedanta, nothing else, no Krishna, nothing else, but hot cup of coffee. But Krishna asks, is happiness in the coffee really? We don't question all that. That's what we have to question. Is, if the happiness depends on the coffee, then gallons of coffee, gallons of happiness. No. More than one cup, I cannot take it. Second cup, I may tolerate. Third cup becomes a misery. So obviously it's not. Obviously my value system, my attachment is a mental now, not the physical. I don't depend physically on coffee for me to be happy. Now examine in your life what is that you really need for you to be happy. If you depend on something other than yourself, you have it. Sir, I have to live in a house. It's a air condition, so hot nowadays. I, I, if I need AC, otherwise it's a miserable. Don't get confused between comforts and happiness. There's a difference. I can be comfortably unhappy. With all the things, I can be, have all comforts but still unhappy. I may not have any comforts but still happy. So, if things are there, enjoy it. If things are not there, enjoy it. That is a wise man, right? Not that I had to go and sleep heart out sin outside. Oh, I am Vedantin, therefore I had to stand outside. I don't depend on the AC rooms. No. If AC is there, good. If his AC is there, also not there, also it's good. Because that's what it is. That vision comes only, it's easy to say, please. Vision comes only if I can recognize the presence of the Lord everywhere. So, when you understand the Gita and Upanishads, that's what Krishna says and that's what Gita says, that's what Upanishads also says. I am everything in this whole universe. Everything is me. So, including the air condition is also me. Not having air condition is also me. So I had to lift my mind to the level of understanding with the understanding of the Gita and face whatever comes as his vibhuti. So you follow now how I, how I change things that come, whether it is conducive or not conducive, whether it's comfortable or not comfortable, whether it's agreeable or not agreeable, whether I like it or don't like it. Whatever that comes that I have no control on, accept it as his prasadam. Because he is the one who is giving. Prasadam means what? We have a reverential attitude with prasadam. Right? Whenever somebody says prasadam, we accept it. So that prasada buddhi has to be understood as we go along with the Gita also. Because that's what Krishna emphasizes. So application of that is because of the attachments my dependence on other things is a problem. And that's Arjuna's problem because he depends on having his gurus and great gurus and his pitamaha, all those people living because he thinks with them he's going to be happy because he grew up in their, in their lap. He doesn't want them to disappear. For us also, we are all, you know, crying and, you know, people are born, people are going, people are coming and going all the time. 
and what is the wonder aschariya vas paschati kasti dena krishna says in the second chapter also <laughs> this life itself is wonder and when dharmaraja was asked what is the wonder of all wonders by yaksha in the in the mahabharat dharmaraja answers this people say be people are being born every day new life is coming all over every second some birth is going on and people already die whatever is born has to die one day or other some live early some live late late that's all it's only time but everybody thinks they are going to live here forever that is the wonder of all wonders because i want this i want this i have to establish i want this because i am going to live permanently here that's our understanding says accept what i cannot change as part of his vibhuti itself as the glory because its life is continuous limit itself i don't know what life is i am able to lift my hand by what capacity i don't know solid carbohydrates minerals it cannot do like that yet i am taking it granted for as though it is something but every moment you see the beauty that is pulsating everywhere if i have that vision then with things that are like with i things don't like i start liking it why it comes it is the glory of the lord expressing in varieties of names and forms now that vision i had to raise above and geeta is yoga shastram it is meant for raising that mind to that level and that's why we have to continue to study until i had to reach in one upanishad it says as long as i am a sadhak a seeker the scriptures provide me the strength support for me so until i realize scriptures provide this support after i realize i support the scriptures because i see it is indeed true what scripture says is indeed true and that's what i learned that's what it is a fact and he provides the strength to the scriptures now so when do i stop reading scriptures when i leave this body until then the scriptures either you support or it supports you either way and that is the glory of the bhagavad gita also that's why it is a prasthana trayam it is a pillar of hinduism so with that introduction we'll dive into the text only taking some aspects of it to emphasize this essential nature of where we are how am i up to what is the truth that's being expounded so the first loka starts with you all know right let's repeat after me dharma kshetre kuru kshetre kshetre kuru kshetre samaveta yo utsavah ಮಾಮಕಾಂಡವಾಶ್ಚೈವಾಂಟುಗೆದ ನೌ ಧರ್ಮಕ್ಷೇತ್ರೇ ಕುರು ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರೇ ಸಮೇತುತ್ಸವ ಮಾಮಕಾಂಡವಾಶ್ಚೈವ ಕಿಮಕುರ್ವತ ಸಂಜಯ so here the first shloka emphasizes the very aspect of this gita and if you go to the last shloka of that essentially yatra yogeshwara krishno yatra partho danurdharah tatra sri vijayor bhuti dhruvani tir matir mama the end with mama that's the end of gita so it starts with dharma dharma kshetre so dharma starts ends with mama is mama dharma what is my dharma is the essence in between so exactly what is my dharma and in the very first shloka itself 
we see the problem starting from the blind king dhatarashtra and his very statement shows where the attachments are says dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yuchcha they are all joined together to fight in this dharma kshetra which is kurukshetra and statement is mamakaha pandava my people and pandavas what have they doing or what are they doing so it is question of mine and others and this is the fundamental problem for attachments mamakaram mamakaram means this is mine i am this and this is mine these are the two i am this and this is mine i am this is ahankara okay because i am is a subject this is an object there's a confusion already right and mamakara is that is also mine now all these things so when i say i am this so that's what all our bio, bio data is bio data is i am this i am this i am this all those big list of pages and pages are is nothing but this 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 and i am and in that very confusion called ahankara where i am is a subject and this is an object subject cannot be a object and i am taking that granted that with this confused understanding that i am the object which is by grammatically is wrong and reality it is wrong that's what the scripture says because you are not an object you are a subject subject cannot be i am this i cannot say i am anything you add becomes an object okay anything is objectified all i can say is i am period for communication you can say something just like in a drama hey i am the king in the drama not that i am really king i am only your buddy but there in the drama i am king so i am taking a roles and i had to play the roles because i am in the drama on the scene already then i had to play what are the role that is taken but knowing very well i am an actor playing that role i don't forget that i am a real actor i am not really king and order everybody outside hey i am a king after after the scene is over if i act like a king they will put me in the hospital <laughs> but i am acting like that i get confused with the roles and the drama of the scene is over then i had to change my scene i am a beggar in the next scene maybe i am a boss in my office not obviously boss in our home <laughs> so i had to change the scene so in the office i had to play as an employee but i don't take the problems of the office at home and then act in the uh, in the home as an employee there or go to office and bring all my home problems there there's a confusion right why we do not know how to live that's what is the problem is we take role of a father role of a mother role of a daughter role of a son role of this each role of an employee role of a neighbor everything is a role playing there is no problem roles will have a problem but i have no problem i am only playing the roles but confusion comes when i take the roles as me so how do i live with the knowledge in outside there is no problem in playing roles Yeah, that's fun why do you play drama it's fun so you know by told the story it says the, the even a cat wants to play you know playing is fun we used to have one cat we used to call lollipop <laughs> and the ball if you play it goes and runs and catches the ball and then it again pushes the ball and again goes and catches so even cat enjoys the play so i asked the cat why are you playing it gave me vedantic knowledge it said meow <laughs> i understood as it's maya <laughs> why maya is nothing but the play so there is nothing wrong in playing but if i take that seriously then there is a problem so the problem is how i can play beautifully yet not take seriously 
that affects my mind now how you apply vedanta now you have to play whatever the role that you are taking most beautifully that you can do it yoga karma shakaushalam krishna says the activity the dexterity in the action is a yogi that itself is yoga but don't get attached to the results of the action as this is his mind that is mine play beautifully accept whatever comes again play it beautifully so that attitude has to be developed by training it doesn't come just like because our class is over it think so it's really very good logic and all the good but as soon as the class is over we are when when somebody gives you golly up left and right bang you left and right again swami chinmayananda used to tell a story says one fellow has joined a, a marketing guy in a marketing firm so he has to go to house to house and sell things so he says the first day he went and then he came back to his roommate who was senior guy all dejected and all that he says what happened i went and tried to sell and the people have did all this and says what happened i was so much insulted everybody threw me out they all abused me all sorts of things because nobody wants you know people come to home to try to sell things so this fellow who is roommate is also senior was also marketing guy says insult how can they insult you i was also a marketing guy i went that people kicked me people put all sorts of thing to me insult never i never got insulted all it means is how you look at it <laughs> you also got the same thing the other fell also get the same thing but your approach to the problem becomes different so how do i take this life in that way is you have to bring the lord the better way to do is bring the lord into picture oh lord you are also like this i know my boss is stupid but lord is there also you remember he lives in the he says i am in everybody's heart but krishna statement it's not it's bhagavad gita statement only we all know if krishna could stay there a day in and day out in his heart what is your problem you are only contacting one hour or two so if i have that attitude then i screen myself i put a shield where i never get affected it becomes a vibhuti of the lord i take as it comes it becomes yes i had to give left and right also but as a play part of the game what is to be required only krishna never spared anybody killed left and right also at the same time he is everything also he shows so that understanding has to be applied in our day to day life also so the first statement of the drashta emphasizes in fact the attachment problem and same problem arjuna also dis- displays drushvemam swajanam krishna i see only my people all over here even though they are enemies to fight with as a, on the part of injustice so how does this problem how do he is so when he got completely dejected krishna gives you first a shocking treatment to wake him up first so that he can think a little bit because he's not in a position to think so there are two slokas that really gives him a banging statement and once he understood arjuna gets up realizes the problem then only he surrenders to krishna says i do not know what to do what is right and what is wrong as do the second chapter the seventh shloka karpanya dosho pahata swabhavah panya dosho pahata swabhavah pruchami tvam dharma sammudha chetah pruchami tvam dharma sam यश्रेयस्या ब्रूहि तन्मे यश्रेयस्या ब्रूहि तन्मे 
शिष्यस्तेहम साधिमाम त्वाम प्रपन्नम शिष्यस्तेहम साधिमाम त्वाम प्रपन्नम कार्पण्य दोषोपहत स्वभाव पृछा मिवा धर्म सूढ़चेता श्रेयस्याश्चित ब्रूहि तन्मे शिष्यस्तेहम साधिमा तां प्रपन्न मै वाइफ टोल मी नाट टू सिंग सो इफ एनीबडी एल्स कैन सिंग प्रॉपरली दिस लोक विल बी ग्रेट बट अदरवाइज यू हैव टू लिजन टू माइंड ओके एनी वे सो हियर द प्रॉब्लम इज एम्फिसाइज फर्स्ट अर्जुना रिकग्नाइज वॉट हिज प्रॉब्लम इज कार्पण्य दोषोपहत स्वभाव पृछा मिवा धर्म सूढ़चेता सो हिस् रागम हज बिकम शोखम एंड बिकम मोहम मोहम इज अ डेल्यूशन बिकॉज ही स्टार्ट सींग हाउ के किलिंग दोज पीपल इज ऑलसो सीन दट्स वॉट ही थॉट बिकॉज दे आर आताई आताई मीन्स दे डिजर्व टू बी किल फॉर द क्राइम्स दैट आर डेव डन सो एज अ क्षत्रिय ही हेज टू डू इट बट him see killing them even those people who are wrong has done wrong itself is a sin so he has become ulta siza that's called moha moha means seeing that which is temporary as real that's our moha right whatever this temporary thing we think it is real and if somebody says there is something real higher says i don't see it how can it be so we have doubts about that this is again ulta siza so that is a delusion where i take the illusion as a reality that's where the problem is and therefore he recognizes the problem and says dharma samudha chetah karpanya dosham is because he is having a miserliness in thinking correctly what is right and what is wrong what is real and what is unreal that is karpanyam here not able to think clearly and therefore dharma samudha cheta i don't know what is right and what is wrong also so therefore my mind is blocked and this is my problem so he has recognized the problem so first ingredient in the adhyatmik study is recognizing that i have a problem why other people aren't interested in gita they not not that they don't have a problem they have not recognized that they have a problem so what should i do if i have a problem if i can solve the problem myself then i don't need a teacher so i need to have a teacher only if i can recognize that i cannot solve the problem myself so that's a second problem requirement first problem requirement is i have to recognize that i have a problem second requirement is i have to recognize that i cannot solve the problem by myself with my own intelligence prachami tvam therefore i am asking you what need to be done and he recognized krishna is the real teacher who knows therefore the third aspect is required is you have to approach a proper teacher and arjuna knows that krishna is a real teacher because when krishna and the duryodhana arjuna and duryodhana went to want to have krishna in their side and krishna puts a restriction he saw duryodhana father he duryodhana came first so duryodhana should have the right to ask first but he saw krishna first he saw arjuna first why arjuna was standing near his legs and duryodhana he thought he can sit on a chair <laughs> so he is sitting here and says even though even though you came first but i saw him first so both have same right but arjuna is younger than you therefore arjuna can ask question can choose first so what is the choice i am one side and all the 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 the, the sainyam and all that are in the other side yadav sainyam all in the other side and they will be fighting i won't fight so we choose whichever you want i am there only but i'll be there only talking only one more mouth feed <laughs> other people will be fighting they are helping so we choose so arjuna says i want you i don't need to fight i, I just you have you have me i can fight and duryodhana was so happy what a stupid arjuna is <laughs> what he selected he, he was he was worried that arjuna will select the, these people he doesn't want krishna to another mouth for him to feed 
who doesn't even fight. And when he was so happy at taking all the Yadava army and tell the Bhishma, I selected and stupid Arjuna didn't select that one. He says, you are a stupid, not him. <laughs> because wherever Krishna is, there is dharma. And wherever dharma is, there is a victory. And Arjuna knows that. <laughs> That's why. Therefore, he is surrendering to him. And that is what is essential requirement. First, recognition of the problem. The second, recognition that I cannot solve the problem myself. The third, recognition that I need a teacher who can teach this for me to solve this problem. And approach a teacher with proper attitude also. Oh, teacher, okay, I'll give you some fees. Give me, teach me. No, he doesn't have to teach. It's not a, a, a teacher is not a professional. He is a teacher only. He is not an advisor. A teacher is the one who teaches that so that he can learn same thing that he has learned. That is, if he doesn't know, he'll tell you, "I don't know." You have to go to another teacher. That is the nature of a teacher. And yes, yes, John, nischitam bruhitan ve. So you teach me. I am surrendering to you. Don't teach me, if you do this, this happens, if you do that and that happens, and if you know all those choices, don't give me all those choices. I have no capacity to choose. You decide and tell me this has to be done. Yes, yes, chan nishchitam bruhitan me. What is convenient? No. What is shreyas? That which is absolutely good for me. That is shreyas. And you decide and nishchitam, definitely this is what you have to do. Then tell me, I will do it. And for that, sishya haaste, I am a disciple. I am ready to be disciplined, therefore I am a disciple. And sadhimam, form prapannam. Prapannam means I am surrendering completely to you. It's called prapatti margam. Sharanagati means I have to completely surrender to the teacher. Then whatever the teacher says, I have to accept that this is for my good. No questions further. And only when that happens, the teaching starts. After discovering the student in the Arjuna, Sishya, Krishna starts teaching. Okay, let's take this sloka alone. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Asocha Nanva Sochatvam Chananva Sochatvam Pragna Vadam Shabhashasi Pragna Vadam Shabhashasi Gatasu Nagatasum Scha Gatasu Nagatasum Nanu so chanti pandita. Together, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Asocha Nanva so chatvam Pragna Vadam Shabhashasi Gata Suna Gata Sumscha Nanu so chanti pandita. Here, Krishna. In these few slokas, he gives the highest knowledge of Vedanta. So the way approach is top-down approach. First give the highest knowledge that this is the problem and this is a solution to the problem. But I cannot see that as a solution because you are on a different level. Now how to raise to that level? So that is the methodology of the teaching here. So it says, she is, Asocha Anvasochatvam. So you are crying where there is no reason for you to cry. This is the dance I learned from my wife. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry, don't worry about it. So, so Asocha Anvasochatvam, because this is the one that is speaking of. So the, 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 you are crying where there is no reason for you to cry. Really? So if somebody is crying, don't go and say, you are crying where there is no reason for you to cry. They will slap you and then say, don't cry. <laughs> there is no reason for you to cry. Mm -hmm. This Krishna is teaching after 
Arjuna surrendered. So only when the other person has surrendered, then you can teach, not before. So you don't have to go about anybody having a problem and crying. Don't keep saying there is no reason it's because the Vedanta says so. No. You have to give only when they are ready to receive it. Okay? This is important Krishna is trying to tell us also. So, anvasochittam. There is no reason for you to cry. And then you were talking Pragnavad Amsabhasha say, because in the last chapter he talking about what is his, what is the dharma and all that he was talking about without knowing the facts. And then he says, Gada Asuna Gata Pandita. Gada Asuna, the one who have gone and the one who are going. Those are the only two categories. <laughs> Either people have gone and other people are only going only. One day they will go. So for them. Anusochanti Panditaha, Panditaha, the one who are knowledgeable people do not cry. So look at this statement. You are crying where there is no reason for you to cry. And then says, for those who are going and those who have gone, the wise people do not cry. So what does it mean? You become wise so that you don't cry. Right? Because wise people don't cry. And what is that wise people that, that makes them not to cry? That we should know. And how you become wise, says, says Shankara says, the Pandita means one who have Atma Jnana Nishtha, the one who has understood that I am in fact is indeed true, fully established in the knowledge that self is the self in all. And therefore, they do not cry. So those are the panditas. And they do not cry for what? Gata asuna, gata asuna, for those people who are dying or living and so on, they do not cry for it. They may help people. That's a separate issue. But they themselves don't cry and they don't lose their own selves in the process. And therefore... For me also, whenever things happen to me, because everybody will have the same problem. But the Buddha story, one lady went, she had lost her baby, and says, he went all over and at last comes, please make my baby alive. I'm crying, he says, yes, I'll make it alive. But you have to bring me some mustard seeds. Then I can make the baby alive. Mustard seeds? I can get anywhere. No. You have to get it from a house. Okay. But from a house where there is no death in their family at any time. So I should be able to get every place you want. There, I want some mustard seeds. They are ready to give. But is there a death? I can only take only if you want to have death. Oh, my grandfather died. My great-grandfather died. All the Every family there is a death somewhere. Because no, it's a continuous process. Therefore, she couldn't get mustard seeds. And she understood this problem occurs everywhere. In the process, Buddha is trying to teach her, death is common. Krishna is going to tell us that whatever is born has to die. Therefore, even if something comes to me, because it's, this is the process of life, life itself is like that. It's a continuous stream. And things come and things go. Nobody is permanent here, including we ourselves. Our children have grown, and children and children are getting children, and this life continuously going on. And everybody thinks, oh no, we, this is real life. No, this is a continuous stream of life that goes on eternally. Just stand back and enjoy the tamasha that goes on. If I can stand apart and look at the life, we living in the life. That's, that is the trick. So therefore, clear understanding of the whole mechanisms are to be proper because this is the real thing that you see. But problem is my attachments are getting crowded and that's where I have to get detached from that. And this, he emphasizes, in the teaching itself, why Panditaha Anusochanti? Why Panditas? The wise people do not cry because they have this knowledge. What is the knowledge? Okay, let's do 
ಶ್ಲೋಕತ್ವಲ್ ನೇವಾಹಂ ಜಾತು ನಾಸಂ ಜನಾಧಿಪಾಭವಿಷ್ಯಾಮಗದರ್ ನೇವಾಹಂ ಜಾತು ನಾಸಂ ನೇಮಿ ಜನಾಧಿಪ ನಭವಿಷ್ಯಾಮತ ಪರಂ ಸೊ ನ ತು ಏ ಅಹಂ ಜಾತು ಸೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ನೆವರ್ ಎ ಟೈಮ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇ ನೇಮಿ ಜನಾಧಿಪ ನೈದರ್ ಯು ನಾಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ನ ಚೈವ ನ ಭವಿಷ್ಯಾಮೇ ವಯ ಮತ ಪರಂ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ನೆವರ್ ಎ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸೀಸ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ವರ್ ನಾಟ್ ವಿ ವರ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೇರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ನೌ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಡೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಸಿ ಯು ಆರ್ ಕ್ರೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಸೇ ಯು ಆರ್ ಡೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ನೆವರ್ ಅ ಟೈಮ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎನ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇ ದೇರ್ ಎನ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಸೇ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕಿಲ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಎನಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದಟ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಸೀಸ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕ್ರೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಕ್ರೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಲೂಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ there is nothing really belongs we came into this world with nothing practically nothing not even dress the mother's milk is already there available for us fruits vegetables everything is there in the in the in the in the, in the, in the creation for us to grow and when we leave we cannot take anything with us and there are other people watching to make sure you don't take it <laughs> so <laughs> what is that i have come here with nothing and go without anything what is that mine here so whenever it's like a 10 star hotel where everything is provided there and old days we used to have hold all and everything we used to pack now everything bed the, the, the towels everything is available but don't take it with you <laughs> leave it there but enjoy whatever you are at that time it's just like 10 star hotel temporarily hotel enjoy what is given if it is air condition breaks down suffer also because there is nothing you can do about it if you get to move another hotel that's okay but if not you have to suffer so that understanding has to be there where i need to get my work done that's my duty so what is my work done no we you know we are deviating a little bit because this is our life what should i do whatever you are in whatever capacity you are placed do your part that is the dharma as best as you can in whatever field you are make the best out of it that becomes a creative ability of you don't complain this is what you have been given and i make the best of what is given and beautify the whole beauty of whole creation itself in the process and that is life worth living everybody everybody lives but as a vedantin i don't just live just like that i make my life better as best as i can within the capacity that i have in whatever field that i am in then that becomes a creation vibhuti we do in the 10th chapter krishna gives you some vibhutis but vibhuti is glorifying the creation itself to the best as you are a creator in a local creator okay so what should i do with the knowledge no i don't become just a sit there in one corner no every mahatma has worked in the field and created such that the generations have got benefited out of it right got the master until last drop of blood he gave for the last camp was in washington only those who know he gave the last camp in washington after that only he collapsed so that is beautification of the life so many people got benefited out of it but so many whole universe has changed in the process to the degree that you can 
So how am I going to change the whole universe? There are billions of people. Only few people are attending this. How can I change? No. So there was a, there was a story where in the shore, the lot of, I don't know whether a crab or some uh, fish came out and landed in millions of those, dying because they are out of the water. So one fellow starts picking up one and throwing it into the water. And the bison says, what are you doing? It makes no difference. There are millions up there. If you are saving one, it doesn't make any difference. Then he picked up one more, throw it. He says, it made difference for that. Right? So whatever I can do within my life, I have to do it to the best that I can in whatever capacity that I have with dharma as the main. Remember, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. It has to be a rightful thing. Just because I want to do anything, go and slap everybody. No. That's not dharma. Whatever is what is done, you have to do your part the best. That becomes a real yoga. That's what is the life of Krishna. That's what life of Rama. That's light of all Puranic stories of heroes and all that. They lived by dharma, knowing very well everything is mitya. So that is a clear understanding of Gita as a yoga shastra. So here, there was, there is, I am not, or I am there all the time, but the body is dying, which means I am not the body. Therefore, next look at 13, Dehi no smin yatha dehi, smin yatha dehi, kaumaram yavvaram jara, Tatha dehantara praptihi Dheeras tatrana muhyati Together Dehi no smin yatha dehi Kaumaram yavvanam jara Tatha dehantara praptihi Dheeras tatrana muhyati so what is that I am that doesn't die because I was there in the past, I was there in the present, I was there in the future, but the body is changing, continuously changing. Therefore, I cannot be the body. Says, Dehi nasmin dehi yatha kaumaram yavanam jara. Just as the body is continuously changing, the BMI is somewhere there, but the BMI is here, the body is continuously changing or modifying. The body that I have when I was a child is different from body when I was a youth, body when I am getting old. Things are continuously changing, but I am the same person I am. I can recollect what was happened in the, when I was a child. I can recollect what happened in when I was youth. I can recollect one, what happened as I was growing. All the time I am able to recollect things, all the experiences of the body, mind and intellect that is going through because the recollector and the experiencer has to be one and the same. That's a law of memory. Which means I was there at that time, I was there in the youth, I was there in everything. We have no problem of accepting that. But what is that I am, we don't know. We think the body, but body itself is changing. Mind itself is what I used to like, I don't like anymore now. And my intellectual values keep changing. That's what education is. So everything is continuously jug, 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 is changing, but I am the same person all along. So now keep thinking, who is that I am? It's not for Arjuna's teaching, it's now for us. Who is that I am? Whenever I complain, at what level I am complaining? Am I complaining at I am level? I am complaining at the body level? I am complaining at the mind level? I am complaining at the intellect level? Keep the complaint at that level only. <laughs> if you have to complain, complain it. But it's only at that because you have to play the game of life. You know, playing is not a problem. Roles will have a problem. But I should not have a problem. So I am cannot have a problem. The body can have problem. Mind cannot have, might have problem. Intellect can have problem. I should not have a problem because the problems belong to mostly we are talking about I am, BMI. And all our problems are only at that level. 
Because problems belong to in the realm of time. So problems come and problems go. It's also in the realm of time. The body, mind and intellect is also in the realm of time. It is keep changing. There is a date of birth and date of death for the body. For the mind keeps changing. I keep changing mind. Some people wanted to come to this, they change their mind. Because changing mind is capacity to do it. I can change my mind. But I am there to change. I cannot change myself. I cannot become another human being. No. Another individual I can. So that I am is Dehi. So it's essentially the one who is embodied in this cannot change, but all other things are changing. So that applies from birth to death, from womb to the tomb, as Swamiji says. But all other things that are changing, I think I am and then cry about because they are changing. So if my body itself is changing, my mind itself is changing and intellect is changing, other bodies, other minds and intellects also keep changing. So how can I expect something from them? Because their, expect, their things are also will be changing. I cannot meet their expectations, therefore they cannot meet my expectations also. I, so I had to pull down my expectations also. For me to be happy. If, I, if my happiness depends upon other people's doing something, I have had it. So therefore, I had to be self-centered in a sense that I can do it. What I need to do is out of game I can do it. I can play the game. Yes, opponent is a better guy than this, but that's fun. I don't want a weaker opponent to play. I want a tough guy to play with. I may lose, but I say, I had a good fight. I enjoyed it. That should be the life attitude also. Because you are playing with the Lord now. He's all powerful. But he enjoys. You also enjoy. Because everything is nothing but the Lord. So if I take with that attitude, then my reaction will be different. I will be only acting, not reacting. Acting to the situation that is required, as required, depending on the situation. And with that, Krishna goes into the highest truth that we take in the 16th sloka. Nasato vidyate bhavo. Nasato vidyate bhavo. Na bhavo vidyate sataha. Ubhayo rapi drushtantaha. Tvanayo statva darshibihi. Together. Nasato vidyate bhavo, na bhavo vidyate sataha, ubhayo rabidrushtontaha, tvanayo tattva darsibihi. So this is one of the famous statements of Gita and which I call it as a law of conservation. So nasato vidyate bhavaha. So if that which is no, no, asataha, means that which doesn't exist cannot come into existence. That's the first statement. That which does not exist cannot come into existence. And na abhavaha vijyati sataha. Sataha, that which exists can never cease to exist. So this is whatever that exists has to exist. It can never cease to exist. Non-existence cannot come into existence. Right? Matter can neither be created. Non-existent matter cannot be created. So, matter can neither be created, nor destroyed. Energy can neither be created, nor destroyed. This is the law of physics. But Krishna, he makes this absolute law. This is discovered long, long time. It's not only applies to energy and matter. It says whatever that exists cannot cease to exist. Non-existence cannot come into existence. Now apply to creation. Is there a creation? If creation involves something non-existent to existence, nothing can happen. It cannot happen. Jesus just said. Right? So nothing can be created out of nothing. No creation can be created out of nothing. So creation can only be 
just as matter can only undergo transformation of this matter into that matter or energy of this into other, that creation is nothing but transformation of something to something else. Right? This is the law of conservation. Now, what exactly existence and non-existence means? And what is that existence which is, doesn't cease to exist? And that we have to go to Upanishads because this comes from the Upanishadic statement as that is the essential truth. So what is that existence? Is Upanishads Chandogya says the existence alone was there before creation. Sadeva saumya yamagramasi dekameva advitiyam. That's how creation is explained. What was there before creation? Something has to be there. It says, existence alone was there before creation. What? What is existence? What is existence if I say this is existence? Then outside that is no existence? This is a problem, you say. You say, yeah, this is existence if I say it's like a bottle or something. If I show this is existence means what? Outside it's no existence. Outside also exists. So existence cannot be finite, therefore it is ekameva advitiyam. These are all scriptural statements, that's why it's called pramana, means of knowledge. It is ekam eva advitiyam, three statements, it says all means the same. Ekam is all one alone, eva it's alone, advitiyam it is non-dual, there's nothing else other than that. That existence alone was there. And Shankara interprets these three words are used to indicate there is no sajati, vijati, swagata, bedhas in that. Sajati, bedha is there is difference of same jati. So vijati means different jatis. So trees are different from chairs, chairs are different from tables. These are each one one jati. Because they have same attributes. Each jati has their own attributes. That's called vijati. That means one Brahman is different from another Brahman, is different from third Brahman, there are vijati, no. There is nothing of that kind. There is sajati, there is no, in the same jati there are no differences also, because if all chairs are one jati, this may be lazy boy chair, that is another chair, that is different types of chair, but all are chairs. So in the same jati of chairs there can be varieties. Even that kind of difference is not there in the existence. And Swagata Bedha, internal differences also are not there. Like in the same tree, the plants are different, leaves are different, flowers are different, fruits are different, all are one tree. Internal differences, that are also there. Why? It is infinite. Because existence cannot be finite. Because if existence is finite, then there is other side is there in the finite. What is there? If it is there, it exists. That means existence has to be infinite. So creation has to be, for all, is fi infinite only. That's why it's Purnamidam. So therefore, that existence alone was there before, and itself became many. Creation is, says, Ekameva Adityam, that Sadeva Saumya Idamakra Masidi. Before creation, existence alone was there, it itself became many. Therefore, the same existence has become into many. So where is that existence? In the many forms now. Follow now? How do I say existence now? Existence I cannot see as this is existence. But existence can never cease to exist as Krishna says here. So itself can undergo transformation into many that you see. You follow now? That, so if you say this exists, yes, it exists, otherwise you cannot see. So if it exists, where is exactly is existence? Is it a property or a product of this? No, it's not a part, it's not a property, it's not a product, any of those, but it exists. Therefore I can see. I can see only because it exists. I cannot see if it doesn't exist. So in the seeing of its existence, I am seeing existence plus a form and a name and all that. So it exists in varieties of forms. Outside is a space exists. So existence is also in the form of space. 
So existence is here, existence outside. There is no difference in this existence and that existence. I cannot differentiate, but yet I want to see the Lord. Where do I see the Lord? Because existence is the one who is there before it himself became many. So if I want to see the Lord, you see the Lord in everything that exists in varieties of forms now. Follow now? What exactly vision of the Lord is? Vision of the Lord involves tuning the mind, understanding everything that exists in the universe because non-existence you cannot see. Therefore, anything you see has to exist. So whatever exists is nothing but the Lord itself in that form. That is Ishwara Darshanam. There is no other Ishwara Darshanam. Now with that understanding, go home and contemplate on this teaching and start seeing the Lord everywhere. Okay? Then Gita becomes a life. So this 11.30, we have to stop as per. We'll continue this Sara because the second chapter of Gita has Gita Sara. That's why I'm taking more slokas here, okay? Because that's what we are doing it. Now we'll do Purnamada, Purnamidam, and then we'll do Chinmaya Mission Pledge, and then we go. Om Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnamad, Purnamudachyate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vasishyate, Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyonama Hari Om We stand as family as long Seek the Lord's face, keep us on the path of virtue, courage, and mercy. May thy grace and blessings flow through us to the world around us. We believe that the service of our country is the service of the world of God. Devotion to the people is devotion to the Supreme Self. We know our responsibility. Give us the ability and courage to fulfill the promises. Early, my mind went blank. Okay. We'll see next week. Ten o'clock sharp. That's a chin my mission.